now let's move on. Um, we need to have additional assumptions uh, in order to support this um, proposition. So what if you if you look um, the monetaries they add another assumption like you know uh, to explain the, the the response of of money the relationship between money and these uh, three different types of, of interest rate or rate of return. So they they, they 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 add another assumption that money demand has a very low interest rate elasticity. In other words money demand is is kind of not sensitive to to this the changes in in this interest rate in rb re and rd so so what um they they, they believe that uh, these three arts will have a very little impact on k so it will not really affect k because of that we can make our discussion simple by you know simply assume that or, or k can be assumed to be constant okay so we can so in the money market equilibrium this k can be assumed to be constant it will not change it will not change so in order for this equilibrium to hold okay money supply equals to money demand okay the whole money demand function um what happens now so now that we have one and two so what will happen when the central bank increase money supply okay so what will happen to the money market so we can see that since k is now constant so k cannot change since k cannot change so obviously PY will have to change, the nominal income will have to change. So based on this additional assumption, the monetaries, they are able to, to really show that whenever a money supply goes up, nominal income will definitely, will surely will go up based on their analysis. Because based on their findings, their investigations is that they believe that K can be assumed to be constant. So this form is 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 what you know is what we refer to as the strong QTM, because this this analysis can be used to support the first the first proposition. Now let's go to proposition number two. So according to monetaries, they believe that in the short run, a change in money supply will then affect real variable like for example real output so we're going to look at you know how does the, this happens in in the short run so uh, according remember in the short run um we can simply assume price to be fixed and and nominal wage to be fixed so there, there are sticky it takes time for price and and wage to change um so to make the discussion simple we're going to simply assume that they are fixed and according to monetarists, um, they believe that the money demand function has, is, 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 is not sensitive to interest rate. So how will that you know, make affect the slope of the um, LM curve? So um, I'm just going to, and, and for the sake of comparison, we're going to also look at um, the Keynesian side here. So let, let's focus on the monetarists. So I have brought the same IS curve, okay, in, in both cases. So in the monetary uh, case, so since money demand is less sensitive to interest rate, so how will then the slope of the LM curve be like? Do you know it? Still remember? Good. So it should be steep. So the LM curve will be very steep in the case of the monetaries. Remember the K, the QTM, so they believe that K can be presumed to be somehow constant. So because of that, money demand will not be really affected by a change in interest rate. On the other hand, um, so this would then give us R0 and Y0 here in the ISLM framework. While the Keynesian, they believe that the money demand function is very sensitive to changes in interest rate because of the third motive for holding money. So the LM curve will be very flat in the case of the Keynesian. So we have R0 and Y0. So now let's have a look when, so according to the monetarists, they believe that a change in money supply will, will, will then you know, have a strong influence on, on real variable, like real output. So in this case, let's have a look what happens when the government okay, decided to have an expansionary monetary policy, increase in money supply. So what happens when money supply goes up now? So money supply goes up in both cases. 
see if I have something to be used to measure this. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to use this ruler just because I want to maintain the same the horizontal distance. So let's say the increase in the money supply has caused the LM curve to shift to the right by 1 inches or 2 inches. Make it really, you know, um, better to be seen in the, in, the, in the video. So let's say this is the same horizontal distance. Okay, so this is the new LM. M1. So it has shifted to the right. So what happens now in the ISLM framework? Okay. So once money supply has increased to M1, so we could we could see that the new it will it will basically cause us you know to to, to be arrived at the new equilibrium here. Okay. So this would be Y1 and R1. So we could see that there is a big you should be able to see that it's actually a big change in in a real variable because this is why a real variable so somehow you know it seems that we, we we are able to prove this in the short run because in the short run we're going to assume price is going to be simply you know there, there won't be uh, too much disturbance in the aggregate demand aggregate supply framework as well as in the labor market the labor market because now there is a change in real income basically firms will demand more labor and since which cannot be fixed so there'll be a full extent of, of the shift in the labor demand market in the labor demand curve sorry so that will cause a huge increase in in n in employment so employment again another real variable see how a change in money supply can also affect another real variable like employment so what about the Keynesian? So let's say I'm going to assume the same distance here. We have 2 inches. 2 inches is here. They believe that the, the monetarists believe that the private sector is actually stable and the, all the disturbance that are, you know, distorting the, the market and stuff, they are caused by the government. So they, that's why they, they, know, they believe that basically the government should not really interfere. So... Uh, you just need to stick to uh, a, a rule on how to determine the, the, the increase in money supply, the, the money supply growth. So that's why according to the monetarist, monetary policy is more effective. So remember how do we determine, how do we define effective, more effective. So because you know a change in monetary policy will then have a, a larger change, will have a, a, a larger influence on real income compared to Keynesian. Okay? And this is actually caused by the way, the different way how they look at the money demand function with regard to their sensitivity to interest rate. Now, what happens if there is an expansionary fiscal policy? So, let's assume that the government decided to increase government expenditure from G0 to G1. So, I have I tried my best to, to draw... Um, you know the the ISLM uh, curve uh, for both the monetaries and the Keynesian. So remember this. So let's let's start with the monetary. So a change in the government expenditure. So hopefully these two would be the same slope, I guess. So let's say um, government has increased their expenditure. So again, I'm going to use the same. So there'll be a shift in the which curve? Okay, IS curve. Okay, because G is a component in the investment. I plus G schedule, which form the IS curve. So as IS curve shift to the right, okay, so let's say again, I'm going to use, let's say, 2 inches. Oh, I did not draw the, so let's say this, this, the initial equilibrium. So this is the initial equilibrium. We have R0 and Y0. Similarly, we have R0 and Y0 here. So, 2 inches shift to the right. So, 2 inches shift to the right will be somewhere here. So, the IS curve shifted to the right. So, here we have ISG1. Okay, a right shift. And so, what happens to the new equilibrium here in the money, in, according to the monetary? So, we're going to end up with a higher interest rate and, of course, higher income. But here you should be able to see that the change in income, in real income, is relatively small. What about the Keynesian? So, well, we have done this many times before. So, 2 inches, again, horizontal distance somewhere here. So, this will be IS G1. So, you should be able to see that we have a new equilibrium where R has gone up. And Y has 
has moved, has increased to the right, okay? And you should be able to notice that the change in real income is bigger. So based on this, and remember the previous uh, analysis on the change in monetary policy, that's why according to the Keynesian, they support fiscal policy. Because according to them, fiscal policy would be more effective in influencing real output or real income. Well, according to the monetarists, it seems that fiscal policy is not really effective. So they prefer the use of monetary policy based on their previous previous video. Okay, not previous video, but previous discussion. Based on the previous discussion, a change in monetary policy would be able to cause a bigger change, a bigger increase in real income, according to the monetarists. So just to wrap up uh, before we move on to the next topic, so these are the four uh, propositions put forward by the monetarists. So, so far you should be able, by now, you should be able to argue and, and, and explain um, the first two propositions, proposition number one and number two. Because we have done this, okay? So in the next chapter, inshallah, we're gonna look at proposition number three, which says that in the long run, a change in money will only change the nominal variable while the real variable Y and then everything else will not be affected. So that's all for now, inshallah. See you again in the next video. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.